Today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in Zooscape, an I Cut You Choose game from Hisasu Hayashi. I think I've heard that name before. I think he, maybe he did Trains um, and probably some other famous games. I'm definitely familiar with his name. Um, so this is an I Cut You Choose game, one of my favorite mechanisms. And I'm probably in my this week's Sunday sit down, I'm going to talk, talk about I Cut You Choose. Um, as a mechanism and the games that I think do it really well and don't do it so well. So you can wait until Sunday to see which category Zooscape fits into. I think Zooscape does a couple different cool things, um, but the main one that I want to mention here is the cage limits. So one thing that I like in I Cut You Choose games, uh, which if you're not familiar with that mechanism, mechanism and, and I'll explain how it works in this game, is that one player um, lines up a bunch of cards. They don't have a choice as to how they line up. So they just put out one card after another. The number depends on the number of players. So say there are 11 cards on the table. And then that player takes this card and inserts it somewhere into that row. And then simultaneously, all players reveal, all players who are still in that round reveal first or second. So for example, if I chose first and I was the only player to choose first, then I get all the cards that extend from the first arrow on. So say there are three cards over here, I would gain all of those cards. This is a game where you're collecting animals. And so the, anyway, getting back to the first part of my sentence, the thing that I like in some I Cut You Choose games is when not everything is good. Uh, when there are certain things that you don't want and they get mixed into all the other stuff that you do want. Um, and that is definitely the case with this game with several cards. But they do it uh, kind of in a universal way with cage limits. So this is a zoo-themed game, and you are uh, collecting these animals and putting them back in, in cages. I think the, the animals have escaped. And each card, so you can see this card. This card is worth five points at the end of the game, but I don't know if you can see it. There are two cards showing here. Yeah, two little card icons. And so that means your cage limit for crocodiles is two. So I can have two crocodiles. If I have three crocodiles, or four crocodiles, five crocodiles, instead of each of them being worth five points, each of them is worth negative one point, because you don't want to let all the crocodiles out of the cage. If you have too many in that cage, they're all out of the cage, at least in the world of this game. This card is a little different. This is a lemur. Lemurs, you can have three per cage. So they're worth fewer points, but you can fit more of them into the cage. Um, so this is one really interesting way that the game kind of evolves over the course of play and that I might start out in the first round and I end up with an alligator or with a crocodile and that's great. And then the next round I might get another crocodile and that's great. And then suddenly crocodiles are something that I really want to avoid. Um, and I like that that's not something that's printed on the card. It's not like crocodiles uh, inherent are inherently bad. It's that they become bad for certain players and they become good for other players who don't have to worry about that cage limit because maybe they don't have any crocodiles yet. So yeah, I like how that is. this is integrated into most of the cards in the game. And here's another. Here's, here's elephants. Elephants, you can only have one. So this becomes really interesting. Elephants are eight points. But late in the game, this might get paired up with a bunch of other cards that I might want. But I already have an elephant. And I don't want to go from eight points to negative two points by taking another elephant. So anyway, I really like how that mechanism works in this game. I'll delve deeper into another specific aspect of this game when I talk about it in my Sunday sit-down video. But if you, can, if you have another game, whether it's a set collection game or an I Cut You Choose game, an auction game, um, Raw comes to mind as an auction game, where there are certain things that you want and certain other, perhaps universal reasons that you don't want certain things as the game evolves. I'd love to hear about that in the comments. Thanks.